Well, good afternoon, everyone. Glad for you guys for joining our session here on considerations for migrating workloads to the Google Cloud. Um, let me give you a little background on myself first. My name is Charles Wright. I am the um, um, I am a managing director for Deloitte um, Cloud Engineering Team. Um, a little background about myself. I started in data center transformation, right, a long time ago when data centers were cool, about 15 years ago. And my background predominantly was in workload transformation in data center, all right? So I spent a lot of years sleeping on data center floors, migrating workloads, okay? And as anybody who has ever worked in that kind of business, um, you spend a lot of time away from your families, right? Um, a quick story about my data center experience. I was at a Dallas data center doing migrations for uh, an enterprise client, and I spent three days there, straight. We didn't smell too good at the end of the third day, and we were literally eating on the data center floor. I mean, pizzas, hot dogs, we were ordering barbecue. It was bad. And the data center team came to us and said, you can't eat on the data center floor. This is a violation of policy. Um, I said, yeah, but we've been here three days and we haven't gone home and we haven't eaten, we haven't done anything. And they said, well, we're right next door to the police station, so if you don't take this food out of here, you're going to jail. So at that point, I realized that data center consolidation was not more important than going to jail. So we took the food out and, you know, and moved forward. But that's kind of been my background and what I've been doing for the last 15 years, right? Prior to working at Deloitte, I had a startup called Adadata, which is where I'm wearing the shirt today. Adadata was a software product designed to move enterprise workloads to the cloud. We were recently acquired in January. So this is my first speaking engagement under the Deloitte banner, so please be nice to me. I'm not used to working for a giant firm. I'm still in startup mode. So, um, so I'm getting used to working for a big company. So, so part of our go-to-market was around building enterprise-grade technology to answer the challenge of transformation to cloud, right? So a lot of folks, if, you know, I'm old. I, you know, don't, don't be fooled, I'm very old. Um, that's what happens when you get acquired. You know, you can get pretty, and, you know, go to the makeover and everything else. So, I spent a lot of time solving a lot of these challenges for decades, right? And anybody who's ever done this, this is not easy, okay? And it's not just the technology, right? People can make cool software to answer problems and deal with challenges. The challenge comes with business. Understanding the business reason why transformation exists, and that's what makes it complicated. Because I can make software that can move thousands of workloads. But if your business can only take one workload moving a month, then that's just what happens, right? So what I'm here to talk about today is understanding really what the complexities are in this type of business and really understanding how to get there and how we do it, right? And that's the reason why I'm here today. So let's, let's talk about it. So let's... If you look at specifically the cost associated with transformation, right? This is, if 3,000 is, is usually the amount of it takes to move one server to the cloud. That used to be a lot more when you were talking about a data center enterprise transformation exercise. So the cost has gone down, but manually it's still an extreme challenge, right? How do you walk into your clients today and talk about one server costing $3,000 from a services perspective to move to the cloud. That's how many months it'll take to after a manual process of, of, of moving this workload into cloud, right? 35 months to break even. And then you talk about 80% of, the, of the, uh, the team will fail to achieve what the client is looking for, right? So what does this tell you? It costs a lot of money. You, it'll take you three years to break even and your customer will be unhappy 80% of the time. Wow, let's go to business together, right? That sounds like a winning strategy, right? No. So the reality is automation solves challenges at scale. I was preaching this 
eight years as, uh, as a head of my startup, I still continue to preach it. Automation allows you to have repeatability. It, it solves for human error and it can actually save and return, have a, a significant return on investment. So, how do we do it, right? What do we consider? What are the challenges, right? So part of what our platform did, and still continues to do as part of Deloitte, is look at these factors when planning and, and, and addressing some of these challenges, right? So, the first thing you want to do, and I always tell people this, my successes in my past life and up until today, planning is a significant part of any successful engagement. I believe 80% of your successful engagement comes from planning, right? It doesn't matter if you have a magic tool. It doesn't matter if you have a, a genius that can make servers work magically, right? It's planning because I can give you a great weapon and if I don't show you how to use it, you might point it at yourself, right? So really, from a strategic perspective, the, the planning is, is critical. And so how do we approach this, right? So the first thing that we do, and we'll start all the way to the left, well, my left, you're right, um, is comprehensive affinity reporting. What does that mean, okay? Through the automation, we're gonna go ahead and map all the interconnectivities from your application stack. Now, you might say, and you guys are, technologists, I, you know, mostly people here are technologists. Well, we have monitoring tools. We have all kinds of stuff, right? You're right. There's a lot of tools that do certain jobs. But what we did was create one tool to do one job, okay? So if you're trying to put a screw into a wall, and I'm not very handy, okay? In my earlier days, I used a hammer because I'm just lazy, right? I know it's got a little star thing in it, right? But you can still hammer that picture in, can't you? The minute you hammer that screw into a wall and you hang a picture on it, you know it falls down, right? Because that screw should not have been hammered in. But just like anything else, we want to use hammers to lay in screws, right? So we'll, we'll get a monitoring solution and say, oh, that'll help me do my, uh, my affinity mapping. The, rea the reality is, is that you really need the right tool for the right job. So in this, in this instance, we actually designed this technology for this specific exercise. And the exercise was trying to understand how these applications are communicating for the specific reason to move them, right? We're not discovering it because we think it's important, we think it's cool, and it's great to know. If we're gonna move this application, it has to be connected. And if it's connected to something, that also needs to move. That's how that was designed. Secondly, it removes subjective reporting. What does that mean? Everybody's been here, worked for a company, turnover, right? Attrition, people leave, information leaves with people. I can't trust the third generation guy who owns an application he's just been managing that he didn't build. I'm not saying I can't trust him, but he probably doesn't trust himself, right? I, I think I know how this thing works. Well, you don't want to bet your, your career on what somebody think they may know about somebody else's work. So what this does is it eliminates the process of guessing or interviewing a gentleman about a potential application stack. The need for a comprehensive view of the current cloud environment or maintain current state of infrastructure. Everybody ever had, I'm sure everyone's used a CMDB to do work. Everyone in here, CMDB? I go to clients all the time and I say, okay, let me see your CMDB. They usually give me the CMDB like this. I sent you the CMDB, okay? That's how they do it. That is not very confidence building when I have to plan a transformation on a banking client that, has, that can't suffer any downtime, okay? That's their CMDB. So I really don't want to trust it, so what I do is uh, basically through the collection period, I create a, a, a up-to-date inventory of the client's infrastructure. That's significant. It might sound like it's easy. I'll give you a real, real case scenario. Went to a client, they had 10,000 servers. 
We discovered 10,000 servers, just not the 10,000 they told us about. That was a really funny, interesting story. I sat down and said, customer, here's 7,000 of your servers. Uh, we can't find the 3,000. The client's like, we have 10,000. I said, well, we found seven. And they said, well, what about these? They, they did the same thing. Here's 3,000 more servers. Can you look at those? Next thing you know, we reconciled their environment. The client was happy. Now they have a plan. But imagine if the same client would have went off their CMDB to do any type of transformation activity. It would have been a complete disaster. So the mapping portion and planning portion is significant, okay? Outside of clouds, servers are underutilized by 43%, all right? We all know what VMware used to be, okay? Everybody here who ever been a VMware person, I, I was certified in VMware in my past. Um, what do we do? We had templates, all right? We got template A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We would coordinate and build environments in a templatized way. Well, that means we have these giant servers that we're not really using and, and, and maximizing. Do we want to bring that same platform to cloud, right? And, and the reason why I'm talking about this, this is not a exercise in manually building infrastructure, right? We don't want to do that. We want to use the cloud automation. We want to use scripting. We want to use our technology to build out this infrastructure. We do not want to repeat our failure on premise in cloud. So by, by mapping it, we're going to tell you how your current subscription, your servers are being currently utilized so that you can size your servers appropriately for future state. That's important because, first of all, it cuts down cost immediately. I'll give you an example. Anybody here who uses Microsoft SQL licensing, for instance, your licensing is attached to the size of your server that you're, you're moving. If I move a server that I'm using 43% of, and I have multiple cores and multiple disks and CPU, my Microsoft license cost is this high. You can get in front of your customer and change not only the, the way that co their compute is being consumed, or how much of it, but save costs to the customer with their cloud adoption move. So you can take that same conversation and take it from a technology perspective, which is the conversations I used to have, and move it into a business perspective and conversations around taking money back into your own business. That's differentiation, right? So let's look at what we did and what we did. So let's, now that we moved on from there, well, here's the other thing I want to make a point about. When we do the mapping, we also, when we're re we right-size the instance, right? Because we talked about utilization. We also, man we also monitor performance metrics, CPU, RAM, disk, um, as, uh, to determine if they need a specialized AMI, should they use a disk intensive AMI, should they use a, an AMI that is for CPU intensity, what, whatever the, the we prescribe. You're, the customer's getting uh, already the benefits of cloud almost immediately after they get there, right? So we're cutting costs, we're cutting down their, 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 their uh, compute footprint, and then we're also saving the money from licensing but we're also saving the money off the size of the instances they're, they're, they're provisioning. So it's a significant differentiation. So let's talk about migrating. So one of the things that we used to do, and this was ATA, it means any to any, was that we're here at Google, so we're any to Google today, right? But part of the platform remo removes the dependency on infrastructure. So if the client is on AWS, they can come to Google. VMware to Google, Google back, doesn't really matter. We can support portability between any infrastructure. So that was, that's a big difference. So there's no vendor lock. So you're really going to get the best value for cloud. Not just from a cost perspective, but a performance perspective. So I don't, I don't, wanna, I don't want to put you on the Walmart of clouds, right? We don't want to go in that direction. What we want to do is balance, balance capability and cost. Those are the kind of conversations you can have with your customers. Now, I've been at Google for years. I know what their cloud is capable of, right? But that doesn't mean they're the market leader from a consumption perspective. So there's some conversations there we could have about how the client can save money and, and take advantage of, of cloud capability. Now, 
manually migrating a, call, a server is 10 times more intensive. I've been there, I've done manual migrations. Those are the last things you want to do because of the complexity, the, 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 the chance that it could fail. Those are things you don't want to do. So with automation, it also cuts down costs. It reduces the effort, right? I'll give an example. Last month, or it was about two months ago, I was in India, and we were doing a, uh, a launch. And we migrated uh, a thousand servers, and I think the whole process, you know, there weren't big servers, but it was like 18 minutes to, la to launch, and they all finished, you know, within seven to eight hours, a thousand. That's a lot of servers. No, no enterprise is going to do that. But we, we did it in our environment just to see what our capabilities were. But just imagine scale, the chat, the, what you can solve when you, when you remove barriers, such as human rest, sleep, and food, right? So there'll be no eating on data center floors if you got automation, right? So there you go. Now, um, okay, I just, this is going backwards. I just want to make sure I haven't been talking this long. All right. Sometimes I forget how long I talk. So as far as management, so one of the other things that we, we talk about with cloud is every time you have a cloud platform, there's a cloud console, there's a management portal, there's a skills transfer, there's guys who need to know, you know, if you have a multi-cloud approach, you have Google experts, you have VM guys on premise, you may have another cloud provider. So when you have uh, the capability of management, you're able to manage across all platforms, have one single pane of glass. So with the product and the, the capabilities that we have, um, at Deloitte, we're able to provision greenfield, brownfield, portable apps, move applications. We're building out in our roadmap microservices conversions from VMware, so we can automatically take, say, virtual machines, convert them into microservices and, and different types of uh, containerization platforms. So those are the, some of the things that we're thinking about for the future. And then, of course, we have our own Mitigate platform, which is a DR platform, which is currently running on a competitive cloud, but we are bringing that to Google in the future. So what are Deloitte's cloud capabilities from a migration perspective? We talked about the journey, right? The client already normally has decided what they want to do. They don't, may not know where they want to go. So those are the kind of conversations we, we want to have with our customers. Build what's best, right? I, I'm a proponent on movement and transition, but that doesn't mean that lift and shift is the only way to get there. Obviously, there's multiple different ways. You can re-platform, we can rebuild applications, you can optimize in cloud. All of those outcomes are possible um, when you have a, you know, a multi-tiered approach. And then advancement in operations. One of the biggest issues I've seen in cloud is not cloud, it's not technology. Is people, right? Where are the people to run this and manage this environment? I assume some of you guys are in the audience today. But the reality is, the biggest uh, obstacle I've seen to change is the customer team, right? We have the leadership team that want cloud. We have the business that wants cloud. But cloud is a new job, right? Where are the skills? Where are the people that can manage this? How do we transition that conversation to our team to educate them on how to support, manage, and understand the DevOps kind of cloud approach versus a typical infrastructure approach. And, then, and that's from a perspective of advancing operations. So when we talk about initiating, engaging, converge, mobilize, and then adoption, scale, that's all cloud and what cloud does. But getting there is the challenge, and that's what we're talking about with our product set. So what is a migration like, uh, life cycle. This is our product set as it was designed prior to acquisition. And this is actually how it lives inside our Deloitte services team now. Um, phase one, as we talked about, is our application analysis, migration prioritization. Migration prioritization is significant. I'm going to talk about a little bit about that today. Migration prioritization is what happens when you plan a migration. That means you may have thousands of workloads. You're not going to move your SAP workloads on day one of your migration plan. Okay, that's not happening, right? I know you guys want to do that, but no, you can't do it. So prioritization will allow you to, and this is through automation. We will tell you which workloads are easy to go first, okay? That's significant because it's going to enable your team to know 
have the answer. Okay guys, we're moving, we're moving our enterprise in 50 ways. The first three, you know, these are the waves and this is how they're going to be broken down. We'll actually give you a plan on how to execute your transformation safely. Automated infrastructure analysis, we talked about that, right? Performance metrics, we talked about uh, sizing, right sizing. We talked about you know, what cloud is best suited for your workload, right? We'll even tell you a cost analysis on how each workload you know, group or cluster is best suited price-wise for which cloud. Because at the, you know, at the end of the day, when the rubber hits the road, you have to have a conversation of cost with your customers. You have to understand that's going to be a conversation. Well, we're going to be able to provide that for you. Readiness planning. So we talked about this a little bit earlier as well. Migration task force setup, right? We're going to put a team together. Wave planning, we talked about that. Security and governance, right? When you get to the cloud, you still have security concerns, right? You still have maybe even more security concerns than you had on premise. All of that is important and part of your strategy and planning, right? So you, before you move, right, you have to have the house set up. You have to have the foundation set up. I, I always talk about migration as the, the, essentially the movers, right? But you don't consult the movers until you have a house, right? You have a foundation, you have walls, you have plumbing, you have electricity. Once that's all set up, that's your security, that's your governance. You have to have doors in the front of your house before you move your furniture in. So all of that is significant. Foundational services planning. What are you planning to do when you get to the cloud? Right, what is your plan? What is your strategy? Is it just a lift and shift, infrastructure as a service? Are you using paths? Are you using database as a service? All of those things, all those conversations need to have been had and everything needed to have been set up. Pilot landing zone build out. It is what, you know, as described, pilots, right? You got to prove this concept actually is viable before you make a wholehearted decision for, to move to the cloud. And then migration sprints, we talk about, you know, the waves, the execution. All of that is part of our readiness planning. Then we talk about execution. And all of the products I talked about here, out of vision, out of motion, handle that. This is really the the next level, the future of what we feel what, where a cloud is going to go from a transformation perspective. Part of our phase three is OS transformation. Part of the capabilities in the platform allow you to transform workloads to different types. So for instance, you can take a Red Hat on-premise and convert it to um, CentOS on Google. Okay? You can take AWS Linux and convert it into CentOS or Red Hat running on Google. That's significant. Because see, AWS thought they won the game when they created Amazon Linux. But we cracked the code and we can take Amazon Linux and convert it into Cent and Red, Red Hat. That's huge because now the monopoly and the vendor lock is completely broken. Now, I'll give you an example. We had a customer that was a retail customer that wasn't happy with their relationship with um, that other provider I just mentioned. They needed to move to Google, but they were running AWS Linux Power Virtual. Anybody know what Power Virtual VMs are? Oh, it's really ugly. Okay, Google doesn't support Power Virtual. We, were my, we converted them to HVM on Google on CentOS. So they took their whole enterprise, migrated it off, put it on Google, converted it, converted it from Power Virtual to HVM VMs, and turn them into Cent OS on Google. It's like magic, really. I didn't do it personally, but I have a really smart team that came up with this capability, right? So what else are we doing with Transform? We're, we're taking on-premise databases like Oracle and converting them to Postgres and MySQL on databases and service platforms. That's the next level of, of transformation. So when we talk about lift and shift, we're changing the vernacular, right? We're not just going to take your workloads as is. We're doing conversions of technology now. So if anybody snuck in here from any competitive product, I'm sorry you had to hear that. Because that's at least three years for work for you guys. We better get started. I think you should leave the session now, actually. Get started immediately. But that's where we're headed, right? We're pushing the envelope up stat, right? So, 
All of the lift and shift is still happening, but we're going to change the game. We're talking about taking VMs, as I mentioned earlier, and containerizing them, right? Through automation, not manual effort. So we already have guys working on this today, doing live projects today, where they're going to the clients and containerizing their network, their, their infrastructure through automation. Huge. So this is where all the fun's happening. So when you ask me about the transition, the acquisition, this is the fun I'm going to have for the next couple of years here at Deloitte, is, is moving the envelope and challenging all the other providers in our space to, to meet that challenge. And then finally, mirror cutover. So enterprise workloads are extremely complex. We all know this. SAP, extremely complex, highly transactional. How do we move them, right? We're listed as one of the only providers globally that is verified by multiple cloud providers as the, a tool of technology of choice for SAP workload. And the reason why is this, mirror. So part of our engine constantly mirrors delta changes to the, technology, uh, to the workloads as they're running live. So we migrate all these complex workloads live and we're constantly synchronizing them. So when we're ready to flip the switch, voila, you're on the other side of the fence. It didn't take you a three hour cutover window and your enterprise workloads are intact. We, opened, we moved over 2,000 SAP workloads in the last 18 months. So when people talk about how hard SAP is to move, we just do it. It's like everyday work for us. So we don't have a problem because that's how the architecture was defined, designed. So this looks like an infomercial for my company, but it's really not. It's really dope, Deloitte, so just so you know. And I keep seeing this all over again. But the, the, um, I've actually walked through many of this stuff already, but we talked about projections, migrate, manage. And then, of course, we have our old disaster recovery product called Adagard, which is running on a competitive cloud today, which will be moved to over to, Am uh, to Google. All right. So all of these modules we talked about, discovery, motion, transform, sphere, and guard, they all fit under one platform. It's called Atosphere, right? So Atosphere is the central brain of the platform that allows you to control all of these manuals. He had to leave because he had three hours. He has three years to catch up on. I think I saw his best. He immediately took a picture and left. So, no, I'm just joking. I just, you better hurry up, I'm just saying. I told you guys to start. Anybody else needs to leave and start developing, you better hurry up and leave now. You're going to fall behind. But, um, but anyway, so the, the module, the platform sits on top of, of all of these modules and allows you complete control over every one. So when we talk about a single pane of glass, imagine one pane of glass and you can see all your compute and have the ability to move it, manage it, create, right, or protect your entire compute. That's why I, I, I used to be a big VMware fan. And that's why I came up with Atosphere. Because vSphere, if vSphere could have done this, they would have been, they would have been great. Now they're on everybody else's cloud. What does that tell you? See our decisions? How you make your decisions will depend on how you end up. But this would have been a significant advantage for them. So we, that was my vision. One single pane of glass, control of your entire infrastructure, complete visibility, complete control from management. That's power, right? So you can create your, your virtual subnets, you can create virtual private clouds and other environments, you can move your compute anywhere you want without bringing it down, future. So what do we collect? And this allows you to see the entire environment but this is some of the reporting we give you. This is visible, this is visualization. These are outputs. These are the cost comparisons. This is all the host data that's collected. So it's a significant amount of granularity. So when I tell people, when you look at this, it's not just for executives. A lot of these views are not just executive driven. There's not a lot of pictures sometimes. But when you are in the trenches and you are trying to make critical decisions, you need facts and you need detail, right? So instead of 
you know, I've seen other technologies, other folks uh, use spreadsheets a lot, right? Manually, right? Before this, remember, I've been in this a long time, right? We used to have spreadsheets, and we used to talk to customers and interview them, and we used to write all this down. That was planning. Think about how wrought with error that is. I can't even make out, is that an L, is that a one, is that a, Z, a O, is that a zero? I don't know, right? All of this stuff is through automation. So the technology is not going to fudge the, the letter. It's not going to tell you something that's incorrect. That's, that's why you can lay your head and hat down on automation many times. It's because once you figure it out, it becomes a repeatable process and you can execute. So we went through this. Um, this is just more granularity I'm giving you guys. So 20 hours to complete manual migrations, right? We're talking about one by one, right? Maybe you build a server, right? You provision a server. You should install the application. You move the data. You watch it move. It gets there. You validate it. You turn up the app. Okay, we're done. Okay, next server. Well, when you can do hundreds at a time, or even dozens at a time, it takes that effort to three hours, and then you just repeat it. So the same 10 servers, right, I can, say I migrate 30 servers, it took three hours. That's 90 servers in three hours. Even though you break it down by hours, it's the same number of hours it took to do manually. You're doing 30 at a time. That's just, that's just simple mathematics as far as efficiency is concerned. Also, secure deployment, versatility. All the transfers encrypted. We use 256-bit encryption inside your environment. So you already have a firewall. You have protective networking, so, someone in there, I'm assuming. And then we encrypt the data transfer. So we just add layer and layer of security in, in these types of scenarios. And then we talked about this. This is important. I tell people all the time, anybody can migrate a web server. That doesn't impress me. I see it all the time. I see demos, real cute demos, where small you know, products and say, look, we migrated a server in 15 minutes. I'm like, wow, that's pretty impressive. What was it running? Bugzilla? Y'all can, can all laugh at that, it's okay. Bugzilla, is, is, that's a laughable comment. But the reality is, Somebody tells you they're migrating Oracle Rack in 15 minutes, that's when you take them out back for lying to you and, and thrash them. You can thrash them and, and you know, I'm just saying. But that's the, that's the reality. The reality is the enterprise is the challenge. Bugzilla, not so much a challenge. So how easy is this to do? Well, I designed this product a long time ago for anyone to use it. Because my challenge was, and just to give you my, my little background, I was, worked in development, I was a storage architect, I was a networking architect, I was a Windows architect, I was a Linux architect, I was an AIX architect. And I don't mean to brag, that means I didn't have any lights. That's not really something you should be proud of. But what it helped me realize is that every time I got in a room with all of these people, Everybody thought theirs was more important than the next guy. And that's the reason why I learned it. Because when I was in the Windows, everybody disrespects the Windows guy. Everybody knows that. That's the Windows guy. He needs pictures. Right? Then the Linux guy. Oh, we don't like him because he really doesn't know Unix. He had to learn Linux. Right? That's not real Unix. So then I knew the Unix guy. And the Unix guy was like, oh, no, I met the storage guy. Oh, that guy. He had all the power because everything was running on high performance storage. And who cares what the operating system was, right? So I learned all of their towers. So I could sit in a room and tell them to shut up. And this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to eliminate all of your jobs. I'm going to create an interface so simple a Windows guy can do a migration for Unix. Oh, they didn't like that. But when they saw it, they couldn't say anything about it because it actually worked. And that's. What, so when we talk about what made me do it, I got tired of the egos and I got tired of the arrogance. There's a lot of that in our field, right? And you guys have been in rooms with really smart people. 
they didn't have to be jerks too. They, they were smart, they earned it. But I got tired of that, so I created this platform so I could say, look how easy it is for this Windows guy on the help desk to migrate an AIXL part to the cloud. And we actually did that. But. So what do we do? We made things simple. We created one profile, one visibility, one view. We created all the API hooks to 20 different clouds and nine hypervisors. 20 different clouds, nine hypervisors. I'm talking about clouds you probably don't even care about. Right? CenturyLink. Anybody care about CenturyLink? Nobody. Poor CenturyLink. But they used to be a big cloud. They still are. They still have a footprint. But that's the reality. The reality is we can go anywhere, anywhere their workloads, that's where we are. SoftLayer, Alibaba. I mean, I don't want to drop too many names at the Google conference, but we know there are the clouds, right? Let's talk about hypervisors, KVM, Citrix, right? Let's talk about Hyper-V. Let's talk about VMware. VMware had a big foothold on this business a long time ago. And it's slipping, right? So how about an interface that lets you migrate between all those platforms through API? So easy, the guy at the help desk could do it. That's what we did, right? So case study. What do we do? We talked about the big number, right? The big number is easy when you don't have limitations, right? The way our product was designed and built was peer to peer. That means the workload process transformation exists between source and target. So as long as the pipe is big enough, there's no processing power being utilized by our product. It's all distributed in the architecture. That means if I have 1,000 workloads, there's 1,000 pairs. They're talking amongst themselves. They're transferring the data amongst themselves. They set up a client-server architecture amongst themselves. That's how you scale, because you don't care about dependencies of infrastructure. There is no worry about, hey, uh, do I have to create a, a, a library to store my images and then deploy? So any of our competitors that are still in here who haven't left to start developing? I think we lost three or four guys. They had to go start. So for the rest of you guys who, who are going to fall behind if you don't leave right now, it's a peer-to-peer -peer infrastructure. That means every compute instance is running their own transformation amongst itself. I think that's pretty cool. I eliminated the whole problem. One of the biggest problems was the device had to sit there and manage all these migrations. Well, if you eliminate that and you spread the compute all through the, through the whole migration, guess what? There's no bottleneck other than bandwidth. So once we procure the bandwidth, that's when you hear terms like unprecedented. That's when you hear words like unprecedented. Oh, I never heard of that. It's impossible. Now, keep in mind, before we were acquired, we used to do this magic all the time. And we would tell people about it, and they'd say, you're lying, you're lying, it's impossible. So now that we're not have to deal with that anymore, we can do all kinds of magical things. So there you go. So all the, you know, I don't know how many startups are in here. I hope there's a couple. It's possible to build magical things, and eventually people start to believe it. So this is the use case. I'm sure it's downloadable. But this is stuff we talked about. Dashboards, strategy, 30 million costs, 55,000 client developers on GCP. So it's a big financial company. You've probably heard of them. So what's happening? So our biggest thing is partnering with the GCP platform, with Deloitte, with Adadata now, to, to explode and to do the unprecedented, right? Anybody can do the precedented, but can you do the unprecedented? That's what we're shooting for. That's what we're planning to do. Um, that's our goal. And now that we, you know, we're established, we have the capabilities, we have the backing, we have the platform to land, that's what we're looking to do. And obviously, the, the capability is there. Now we have the consultancy with Deloitte. Obviously, Deloitte has obviously a significant investment in providing the cloud services. And now they have the platform and technology to do it.
So anyway, guys, thank you. I'm 10 minutes early. If you guys have any questions, please see me afterward. I appreciate your time today. Thank you.